in the future. Oh, God, I'm falling. This drop bridge. Uh, no. Dave, your fear of heights is highly irrational. It actually kind of is. I actually got it from a movie, believe it or not. <laughs> Ever heard of the Page Master? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Welcome back, Space Cadets, to Hal and Dave's Trip to Jupiter. Where we talk about inane pop culture from the 90s. The only channel where we can talk about Don Bluth films all day long. It's true. Uh, and have, it have nothing to do with what we're doing. <laughs> Should we just have Dragon's Quest or <laughs> Dragon Slayer on? Let's go on? play Dragon Slayer. <laughs> and just talk about Don Bluth the entire time. Well, that and game Don is Bluth not... Don Bluth a weird, strange individual. He's a fascinating character in terms of animation. Really, probably the last really auteur creator in animation right now, I'd say. Well, uh, God, that's, that would cause like huge debates with people. We, we have 29 people watching us, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Debate away. All right, all right. I would say the current... Uh, some people are going to disagree with me on this, but I'm not a fan of the current animation industry for a lot of reasons. One, there's not a lot of diversity in what is available in animation terms. Now, that might sound dumb, but my thing is like this. I'm fine with comedies as long as there's alternatives or you know i'm fine with like trends as long as there's easy alternatives to get if everything's just a trend like right now a lot of cartoons are kind of relying on a lot of same trends so to me it's like i'm just so bored of it like you I know um on a cursory look around Wikipedia, I am not sure that Don Bluth had anything to do with the Page Master. Um, uh, he it definitely looks like his style. It looks there. like his style, it sure does. So it might be a miss so who directed that movie anyway? Uh let's see. Uh directed by Joe Johnston for the live action segments and Maurice Hunt for the animation. Oh, dang. I I never heard of Maurice Hunt. He probably uh, did something I know about, but I don't know. All right, I'll look it up. All right, take a look. Uh, I'm curious now. Uh, I mean, so for for me, I, I was always geared this way as a kid, where I I loved all the shows that were like really action oriented. So like Ninja Turtles, Transformers, and moving on. You know, I grew up. I watched Transformers: Beast Wars. I watched Gargoyles, and Batman the Animated Series, oh. Superman, well, all those shows. So I loved the shows that had like action and drama in them. And so to me, the the current state of like Western animation is repugnant, where everything has to be a goofy comedy, a joke with squash and stretch animation. Uh, uh no way. I mean, this is why I turned to anime years ago. I can get that. Okay, but I'll say this before you look it up. Uh, Joe Johnston made one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Uh, the Rocketeer. Love okay. that freaking movie. Is that, like, considered a really good movie, or is that just something you love personally? Um, people who watch it love it, I find. Uh, let's see. Maurice Hunt is not really known for anything noteworthy. <laughs> That's what I kind of figured. The Black Cauldron. I, I, I He was an animator on The Black Cauldron during uh, what I believe was Disney's Dark Ages. Uh, yeah, I, I'll i say this. Uh, the, Where the royal pig keeper becomes a hero. That's the sad part, because the book those, that uh, series, that movie was based on are really good. But they tried to combine two books into one. And um, that's also a series which would probably benefit more from an animated series. Man, adapting books is a tricky business. Yeah, so we just learned a bunch of texts and combos. <laughs> I, I, don't you appreciate how we keep it on topic, Space Cadets? I know, right? Uh, so here's a... So I'm going to show up. We have now Spin Cut. We have Heal Beam. And we have Napalm and Protect. So, And this is some of the other attacks we have. We don't have a triple tech yet, unfortunately. One day. One day. One day soon. More of these freelancer dudes. Huh. But, in general, Rocketeer's a really good movie, especially if you're a fan of classic pulp Hollywood stuff. I would say. 
and I recommend it to people. Um, it's fun. I have no complaints, and it also it also has a very underrated comic. So you know, uh, Rocketeer, just good stuff. I mean, apparently this uh, Joe Johnston worked as a special effects artist on Star Wars. Yes, he did. So that that's something. I, whenever I see like a documentary or something like that on the old Star Wars films, how they made those things, I'm always impressed because they managed to do a lot in an era where they couldn't fall back on computer animation. In general, they, they blew up those models, like <laughs> like the Death Star or like Tie Fighters and stuff. They blew those models up just to get that on camera. Uh, dude, like. It's insane what they had to do for the original Star Wars in terms of just everything. That movie was also very experimental back in the day, comparatively. Because no movie had really looked like that before then. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why they are classics and they last to this day. Well, Star Wars is important for a lot of reasons. It's probably also a reason why the uh, sequels always struggle. Whoa, oh, you fell off the waterfall. I did. Now I have to go back up. But yeah. it's, it's an easy way to get out of this. That's interesting how the your, your party members had to fall behind you before you could move on. Yeah, but it means I have to go back up here. We're all tethered on a chain. We're just like... I, I guess I'm going to have to run if I run into any more of the enemies again. Like this one? Well, these guys are so easy to beat, I'm just... I'm done. But there's more. There's more bird crow demons. Never mind. So we're just going to kill these dudes off. Nope. Easy peasy. Like, at this point, these guys yeah. are just like... These guys might as well be putties to us. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> nah, yeah. like, uh, these guys are just not worth our time. So, no, you also have to, I also like this, that this little dude's trying to tack us from over can, there. Can he actually get you? I think he can annoy us, but I don't see a lot of, I don't think he, he damages. Do, like, chip damage? At best. I don't think he can kill us, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna avoid that dude and yeah. hope for the best. Da, da, da. Thankfully, these guys are really easy. I will admit, getting the extra stuff from the guys in one thousand in one million BC or so, uh, that helped actually. Uh, sixty-five million BC. Yeah, sixty-five million BC. Well, because whenever people talk about dinosaurs, they're all like, "Oh, sixty-five million years ago." <laughs> but uh, that, that's a really generic time frame because the the dinosaurs lasted. I think even now, the dinosaurs lasted for a longer period of time than humans have ever existed. Well, the thing with the dinosaur stuff is that we like to think that a lot of them were contemporaries of each other, but um, that's our fiction to an extent, when really a lot of them were millions of years apart at points. Yeah, certain species went extinct and other species rose to prominence. Like, it wasn't just like this was how the era was. Hell, it's kind of, there's actually an interesting debate in the Egypt circles on how old the Sphinx actually is. Oh yeah, the, the, it's, it's really interesting that, like, now that we're such an advanced species where we choose to chronicle our history and we try to figure out the world around us, that we try to figure out the, the time frames on different things, and, and we can't, because we, we go back to times when things were not recorded properly. No, yep. Hold it. Did I screw this up? Okay, I probably just have to go... Oh, dang it. If I had to guess, it feels like you're going backwards. Yeah, I, I think I, I did. Tell. I'm just gonna run from these dudes at this point. Because, alright, ran away. Cool. We'll just have to keep the space cadets entertained with our science discussion. Uh, yeah, so, I'm, I'm not gonna debate whether that's true or not. Like, people have been debating that. It's an interesting idea, though, to at least talk about. And the idea that there yeah. were other civilizations we don't know about that probably existed, but we don't have evidence for. It's, a, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I, I, I love that stuff, and that, that's why I love uh, like science fiction, because you know we, we may never actually know the truth in our own lives, but science fiction can <laughs> hypothesize a fun alternative. Yeah, okay, no, I was going backwards. I'm now recognizing this area. 
Uh, you gotta love it when you're lost in RPG. It's so fun. I'm just gonna run. Because I don't want to deal with these dudes. And I ran away. I think at this point I'm like high level enough where it's like, uh, yeah, don't. You don't have to deal with these dudes. I've, I've always appreciated the idea that there's like ancient aliens or something like that. That uh, ancient civilization was assisted by some outside force and they made something truly amazing that we can't even understand in our modern times. <laughs> you should read a lot more Jack Kirby because there's a lot of stuff he made that actually builds on that idea to an extent. I imagine so. Um, he had a lot of ancient alien ideas. Well, okay. One of my favorite comics by him, just because it's so kind of dumb and wonderful, is Devil Dinosaur. Now, a lot of people know Devil Dinosaur because of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, but Devil Dinosaur okay. was a Jack Kirby thing first. And the idea was that Jack was Jack said in the comic is that this definitely happened, you just weren't there to see it, and I'm chronicling... <laughs> I, I mean, who's there to prove him wrong, really? Yeah. I'm not going to prove Jack Kirby run, wrong. I mean, for all we know, Jack Kirby had a time machine. Uh, I, I, I like to think Jack Kirby had a time machine. It's the only thing that makes sense. I mean, I like to think that Jack Kirby himself is timeless. Uh, genuinely, Jack Kirby is one of those creators who was a lot ahead of his time on a lot of things. If you ever want to take a look at how ahead of his time... Um, Alright, so one of his... <laughs> no, I, I teach classes involving comic book illustration. And every now and then, I have to explain to them what Kirby dots are. It's and I am very happy to do so. To be fair, it's very not a lot of people know it. that's a stylistic thing. They just see it and they're they, you Kirby know, dots are awesome. They're great design elements, especially if you want to. They're great for portraying energy. Really are. You know, cosmic beings always are surrounded by them. They sh as they should be. <laughs> they really should. Dark side, Thanos, whoever. Like, that's always how I view them, is that, like, if you don't have cosmic energy flowing around them, then, then why are you even bothering to draw them? <laughs> if you don't have Kirby Dots powering your cosmic energy. But, so, in the first issue of OMAC, which is a lesser Jack Kirby series, well, not lesser in terms of quality, but lesser because people don't often talk about it. The first issue involves uh, the concept of Build-A-Friend, where are these robots where you build and they give you companionship. That was an entire issue so, of that series. So, Jobits? Yes. Mountains are nice. Aw. So are you, apparently. Hey, it's a good save point. Yes. And, I would say, so we are here. Yeah, Tata and Frog? Uh, yeah, this is actually the part where we're gonna run into, uh... No, wait, what, what time frame are we in? We're in 1080, right? Uh, 600. 600? We're in 600? Yeah, I've okay. been saying that. Hold it. Alright. Uh, Shiny? So you got a speed tab? Yes, and guess who it's going to? Chrono! Uh, because Chrono's the only character that we both with these things. Uh, yes. But, uh, Chrono is just very handy to have. At, because he actually has a lot of variety in his attacks. No, is there ever a time where you lose a party member? Uh, and you have to wait for them to come back? Uh, I'm going to not say at the moment. Uh, okay, apparently that's a secret. Well, because there, there's certain RPGs that I've played where they'll introduce the game and they'll have, like, one really good party member, and then they'll take them away for, like, half the game and then give them back to you later on. Yeah, but we're going to focus on this bit. Are you here for the Masamune? There... I, I have to look it up because I forget if it's the Masamune or something else, but they're the the name of this particular blade is like a corruption of a different legendary blade. Yep. So this is very important. So we're gonna test ourselves for the Masamune. <laughs> Fighting by Fighting against Masa and Mune? Yes. The spirits Jeez. of the sword. They also demonstrate some attacks. So, Rocket Punch. Oh, 
let's see. Masamune is widely recognized as Japan's greatest swordsmith. Yep. He created swords and daggers known in Japanese as Tachi and Tanto, respectively, in Soshu tradition. <laughs> yep. It's a classic sword thing, so... Uh, maybe it's the Murasame, or something like that. There, There's a similar sounding sword name that uh, is really just like a bastardization of things. And I remember in uh, like Metal Gear Rising, I think it is, that uh, the character Sam has a sword, a legendary sword that is deliberately called whatever like the bastardized name is. It, so it is to indicate that like he got it wrong, they got it wrong, <laughs> everybody got it wrong, but it's his legendary sword. So... Yeah. <laughs> because, because, like, he's a weeaboo. <laughs> he's a, the ultimate weeaboo. <laughs> he, he's a big cyborg weeaboo. The, the ultimate uh, cyborg weeaboo. Alright. So, you have to beat one of them. I mean, it's kind of like if you called uh, these characters, like, Exa and Caliber. <laughs> so, they're talking about Cyrus, so that's important. What should we do? It's time for real. We mean business. They combine. Are they gonna do the fusion dance? Yeah. Well, fusion, fusion? Ha! ha! Now Hal and Dave have combined to become Have or Dal. Dal. We can't decide which. Ooh, yeah. Look at these guys. Yeah. They they really did do the fusion dance. So, so apparently the fusion dance and all that stuff in the Majin Buu saga is the result of Akira Toriyama just like going crazy. I can I can see that very much. <laughs> because uh, for the previous story arcs of Dragon Ball Z, he had a lot of editors who were constantly like correcting him and telling him what to do. And for the Majin Buu saga, they finally got to a point where he's just like, stop bothering me, let me do what I want. You know, I'm kind of glad for him. He's just like, you know, just let me do... Just let me do my thing. Well, it's because there was, like, a lot of executive meddling in the previous story arcs. Because he, he, he just wanted to be done with Dragon Ball. Because Frieza Saga was supposed to be the end of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. Goku was supposed to die. <laughs> like, that was supposed to be... Like, Frieza would be defeated, and then Namek would explode, and Goku is dead. The only Super Saiyan. The end. And then uh, his editors were like, Dragon Ball makes us lots of money, make more stuff. And so then the Cell Saga happens, and he makes like, an he, he apparently saw Terminator 2, and then he makes androids, and a time travel storyline. And then they're like, uh, these androids suck, make them cooler. And then he makes like, Android 17 and 18. And they're like, these androids still suck, make them cooler. And then he makes Cell. And then they're like, Cell sucks, make him cooler. And then he makes Perfect Cell. <laughs> like, there's just like this long progression of executive meddling, from what I understand. It's it's a little more complex than that, to an extent. But yeah, it's just... Yeah, like, they, they just kept telling him to change it. So that's why there's so many, like, twists and turns. Which is, incidentally, what made it my favorite story arc. Is that it actually had a lot of different unique twists. Instead of, like, one really long, protracted battle the way Frieza did. All right, we gotta do some. Okay, time to concentrate. Revive. Yep. We're gonna heal Chrono but, like, there. Like, what, what happens with the Majin Buu saga, <laughs> and the reason why you have, like, fusion dances and spells that turn people into chocolate is because Toriyama was just like, I, I wish I wasn't working on this manga, but because I am, I'm gonna do whatever I want. I can see that. I'm just gonna mid-tonic everybody. Even Robo, who's like, I'm a robot, but I take tonics. I absorb your medicinal fuel into my power cells. It helps. It really helps. Alright. So, we're going to do some more attacks on him. Hopefully we'll be able to take on this boss, but this will let us uh, take care of one thing. Oh, no, I don't want to cure him. Wait, does that work? Can you cure enemies? Yes, I think... You can. I think there's one that you do have to. Like, it That's... does that whole thing where. <laughs> it does that whole thing where if you use it on an undead enemy, it kills him. Oh, well, that's like the, the special way to defeat the final boss of Final Fantasy X. Yeah. Alright, so. 
I'm going to. Ooh, he destroyed you guys. Cure beam? Yeah, I'm gonna have to heal Chrono up here. Wait, can't you do that cure wheel power? Uh, I think I. Well, Chrono's out of MP. Yeah, I'm tonicking him up, so. Yeah, yeah, Luke, I ain't looking so good here. Yeah. Robo. <laughs> Robo is clinging <laughs> by a thread. I'm he Yeah, I'm healing Robo here. He needs it. He really does. And cure beam. Man, we were going off on a long chit chat and all of a sudden things got dire. It happens. But now, nah, I'm good now. Spin cut! Hey! Is being experiencing pain for the first time? Uh, he's just up. Well, you see, his blubber makes him take more pain, so. Yeah, blubber monsters. Yeah, I love it. So, uh, we're gonna do uh, the mid tonic shuffle, as I call it. Oh, and he dies. You got him! Yep. Dissolves into nothingness like there was nothing there to begin with. Oh, yeah. Got He's 10 gone. Points and 1500 gold. And Masa and Moon are just like, Oh, why did you do that? Oh, man. I could not be trusted to be a hero in this situation. <laughs> if I just defeated, like, a demon monster boss that splits into two children, <laughs> I could not be trusted not to just, like, kick them around and be like, You little punks. You think you can pull that shit on me? <laughs> yep. They beat us, big brother. <laughs> Will they fix us? Yeah, now we have to find the owner and get... And, you know, who could the owner be? So, we get Masamun. We pull the Master Sword out of the stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we gotta give it to somebody, and clearly the hero of this story, Chrono, should get it. Clearly. It's not just a myth, but it has long been broken. We got the broken Masa Moon. So, there's a very, so there's a couple of things with the Masa Moon, is that it'll be a constant element to this game. We're gonna have to go back to do a couple other quests to fix stuff. And so this is an ongoing quest. Yeah, this is gonna be a thing. And to get the ultimate version is also a quest. We don't technically have to get the ultimate version, but I'm going to okay. do that because it's Frog. So, we have finally obtained the broken Masamune, Space Cadets. Will what we... will we do with it? How will we use it? Well, I guess we're going to have to find out next time. I honestly don't know. Next time on Hal and Dave's Trip to Jupiter. Yep. Yeah.